Good evening, boys and girls. We are on my favorite chapter in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, chapter 15, The Chocolate Room. Ready? An important room this, cried Mr. Wonka, taking a bunch of keys from his pocket and slipping one into the keyhole of the door. This is the nerve center of the whole factory, the heart of the whole business. And so beautiful. I insist upon my rooms being beautiful. I can't abide ugliness in factories. In we go, then. But do be careful, my dear children. Don't lose your heads. Don't get overexcited. Keep very calm. Mr. Wonka opened the door. Five children and nine grown-ups pushed their way in, and oh, what an amazing sight it was that now met their eyes. They were looking down upon a lovely valley. There were green meadows on either side of the valley, and along the bottom of it, there flowed a great brown river. What is more? There was a tremendous waterfall halfway along the river, a steep cliff over which the water curled and rolled in a solid sheet, and then went crashing down into a boiling, churning whirlpool of froth and spray. Below the waterfall, and this is the most astonishing sight of all, a whole mass of enormous glass pipes. They were dangling down into the river from somewhere high up in the ceiling. They really were enormous, those pipes. There must have been a dozen of them at least. And they were sucking up the brownish muddy water from the river and carrying it away to goodness knows where. And because they were made of glass, you could see the liquid flowing and bubbling along inside them. And above the noise of the waterfall, you could hear the never-ending suck-suck-sucking sound of the pipes as they did their work. Graceful trees and bushes were growing along the riverbanks, weeping willows and alders and tall clumps of... Oh, this is a hard word. Ready? Let's see if you guys can get it. Road... Road... Rodendrons. Rodendrons. I'm probably saying it wrong. With their pink and red and mauve blossoms in the meadows. There were thousands of buttercups. There! cried Mr. Wonka, dancing up and down and pointing his gold-topped cane at the great brown river. It's all chocolate. <gasps> Every drop of that river is hot, melted chocolate of the finest quality. The very finest quality. There's enough chocolate in there to fill every bathtub in the entire country. And all the swimming pools as well. Isn't it terrific? And just look at my pipes. They suck up the chocolate and carry it away to other, to all the other rooms in the factory where it's needed. Thousands of gallons an hour, my dear children. Thousands and thousands of gallons. The children and their parents were too flabbergasted to speak. They were staggered. They were dumbfounded. They were bewildered and dazzled. They were completely bowed over by the hugeness of the whole thing. They simply stood and stared. The waterfall is the most important, Mr. Wonka went on. It mixes the chocolate. It churns it up. It pounds it and beats it. It makes it light and frothy. No other factory in the world mis mixes its chocolate by waterfall. But it's the only way to do it properly. The only way. And do you like my trees, he cried, pointing with his stick. And my lovely bushes. Don't you think they look pretty? I told you I hate ugliness. And of course, they are all edible, all made of something different and delicious. And do you like my meadows? Do you like my grass? My buttercups? The grass you are standing on, my dear little ones, is made of a new kind of soft, minty sugar that I've just invented. I call it swudge. Try a blade. Please do. It's delectable. Automatically, everybody bent down and picked one blade of grass. Everybody, that is, except August Augustus Gloop who took a big handful. And Violet Beauregard, before tasting her blade of grass, took a whole, took the piece of world record breaking chewing gum out of her mouth and stuck it carefully behind her ear. Isn't it wonderful, whispered Charlie. Hasn't it got a wonderful taste, Grandpa? 
I could eat the whole field, said Grandpa Joe, grinning with delight. I could go around on all fours like a cow and eat every blade of grass in the field. Try a buttercup, cried Mr. Wonka. They're even nicer. Suddenly, the air was filled with screams of excitement. The screams came from Veroca Salt. She was pointing frantically to the other side of the river. Look! Look over there, she screamed. What is it? It's moving. He's walking. It's a little person. It's a little man. Down there, below the waterfall. Everybody stopped picking buttercups and stared across the river. She's right, Grandpa cried Charlie. It's a little man. Can you see him? I see him, Charlie, said Grandpa Joe excitingly. And now everybody stared, shouting at once. There's two of them. My gosh, so there is. There's more than two. There's one, two, three, four, five. What are they doing? Where do they come from? Who are they? Children and parents alike rushed down to the edge of the river to get a closer look. Aren't they fantastic? No higher than my knee. Look at their funny long hair. The tiny men were no longer than a medium-sized doll. They had stopped what they were doing, and now they were staring back across the river at the visitors. One of them pointed towards the children, and then he whispered something in the other to the other four, and the five of them burst into peals of laughter. But they can't be real people, Charlie said. Of course they're real people, Mr. Wonka answered. They're Oompa Loompas. Chapter 16 is called The Oompa Loompas. I think it's too long to go ahead with tonight. This part's not in the movie. I was going to go ahead and read it, but it's getting kind of late. And why it's getting kind of tired. And we're really excited to see this part of the movie. So, I want you to think today about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the book itself, and how it reminds you of the witches in Matilda, who all three books are by the same author, my favorite author, Roald Dahl. Think about how he gives you such a beautiful um, detail in his words. He paints the picture with beautiful synonyms, delicious words. Think about how each book is connected? That's a hard question. Also, I want you to think about what the word delectable means. I love that word, delectable, and try to say it yourself. Think of something that you know that is delectable, and I'll share mine tomorrow night. Write about it in your journal. What do you have in your kitchen that's delectable? Good night, guys.